Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another trading and market recap for Wednesday, October 16, 2024. The opening bell is more than an hour away. The time is currently 8.20 a.m. Eastern. I'm Sam, and what I do here on this channel is use levels of support and resistance in the SPY, also known as the spiders, to trade against in the E-mini futures, which is the symbol ES. Check out the description below this video to learn more about the mission of this channel and a little background on this trading strategy. After the drop yesterday, the futures have kept price around the close, which is about where the light blue line is at 579.90. Here is what the pre-market activity looks like right now. It's mostly flat. So I'm going to use that area around 579.90 as my reference to see if the bulls can keep price above or if the bears are able to push price down farther. It may be a tradable level if the SPY hits it the right way and depending on other factors at that time. You'll notice I have a few zones on the board today. Those are the pairs of levels that are shown in the dashed lines. So you can look at those as one big level or area of support and or resistance. I usually scale in with multiple contracts within zones like this. There's a lot going on down in this area. So if price gets down there, it's probably not going to be easy for them to just slice through these levels and zones. If that does happen, we have something going on that's a lot different. Anything is possible. But don't forget, on the larger time frames, as we discussed in last night's video, the overall big picture is still bullish, like on the daily and the multi-hour charts. That's not to say there could be some increased volatility in the short term. Whatever happens, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss the aftermath. Any trades entered in the E-minis based on these levels in the SPY will be dissected. The plan is to either make money and learn in the process, or if we give money back to the market, we'll still learn something in the process. Catch you on the other side. We're back. It's about 10 minutes in front of 9 p.m. Let's jump right into the trades that were possible today as price came into these three levels. Well, one level and this zone up here to be specific. So first, the level at 579.90 was really designed to be a gauge for who might be in control for the day, the bulls or the bears. It wasn't anything more than just the close of yesterday, or near it at least. Based on how price was hanging around this area in the overnight session, I got the sense that if price would stay below, it was more likely that a bigger push down could happen. And if price were to get above and stay above, that would increase the odds the bulls could push price higher. So with that understanding, the position you would have wanted to be in should have been on the long side as price got above this level and you started to see closes above this area like on more important time frames like say the 15-minute chart, the 30-minute chart, and certainly the hourly chart. But let's say you did what I did and you went short at around 10.05 a.m. when this level was hit from underneath. This would assume you ignored the part about this level being less of a tradable level and more of a gauge and also ignoring the fact that right after the opening bell, they came up and hit this level from underneath and pulled back quite a bit. But at this point in the day, early in the morning, you really wouldn't have known if price would react again at this level if they hit it again for enough for a base hit or they would power through and keep going. Well, obviously they chose the latter and kept going. I'm going to say you went short at 579.85. That's the operating level. So being short here, would that have spelled trouble for you according to the rules? No, but you would have needed to know what to look for. I've added the reference levels. This is the profit objective of four points in the E-minis, roughly. This is 40 cents away from the entry point. That's the green line. The red line is the fumble threshold where a signal would materialize, something I look for that tells me that the trade could be wrong, and I might want to consider reversing, but that did not happen while they were out of the money up here. So yes, you would have been out of the money for a bit, but it wasn't a big deal if you're treating this like a process and waiting for that signal. I'll show you something else in a minute that would have given you more confidence that price was likely to stall out in this area, something I actually missed. So they did fall back down and they almost gave you a base hit right here, but they missed this four point profit objective by just pennies, like a tick in the E-minis. So that's a near miss. So within a few minutes, they're right back up at your entry point. So the smart thing to do is bail out at your break even. I'll tell you now that by this point, I was actually in a long position while they were doing this little pullback. And since this level would have been good for a recycle trade on the long side at this point anyway, you know, they got out of this level, they're coming back down. This is the time you want to think about, well, I want to be on the long position at this point, but you would have still been in the short position. So would you have actually switched the trade around to go long here? Probably not. 
because you would have still been in this trade at this point, looking for your short trade to give you enough points to pull out of the market, and that didn't happen. So we're going to call this trade a wash, no points. Although, as we already said, being above this level was a sign that the bulls were in control and you could have ridden this thing up. This is what I did. I'll show you later when we watch my recording of the live trades. It's up to you what you would have done. I'm just going to treat each level the same. No subjectivity here. Here's what I was talking about earlier about another reason why price was likely to stall out in this area. This level here at 580.98 is the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement from the high to the low of yesterday. I didn't see any other reason to think that this area could be good overhead resistance when I was running the numbers this morning, but clearly price was rejected from this 38.2%. It was a good thing to know ahead of time, as we'll see later when we watch the recording of the live trades that I took. I was actually not paying attention to this clue, and I jumped the gun, reversed too early right before they fell. But we'll look at that in a minute. With this level done for the day, no trade because of the wash. The next level was the bottom of this zone at 581.90. Do you recall seeing this kind of thing happen before? It's where price gets within 20 cents of a level. It consolidates around or within or so that 20 cent threshold for 20 minutes or longer. And if price does that, which is kind of what I've got here, I've got this level at 581.70. So they come up close. They're kind of underneath this level. Not quite close enough, but volume was drying up. It was getting pretty slow at this point in the day. And this is starting to look like a consolidation that fits that criteria. So if they violate that rule, the 2020 rule is what I call it, which I believe is aptly named. If that kind of thing happens, it's a clue that price is building up energy to push through the direction that they're already going, in this case, up. So... Consolidation patterns often work like that. Using this one-minute chart lets you see this kind of granularity so you know what to look for. So since they violated the 2020 rule, you would have canceled any order activations at the bottom part of this zone and not traded the level. As you can see, that was the right decision. Price did not react there, so a short trade would not have worked. So far, no profitable trades today. So what about the last level up at 582.70? Spiders hit that, and it looks like it provided great resistance or price pulled back enough for a base hit right here but did they unfortunately within minutes of being triggered this trade came within pennies or just a tick in the es of giving you a base hit of four es points they got within one penny and pulled away within a few minutes three or four minutes they're back up at your entry point once again you have to ask yourself at this time of day after trending up all day will they keep going higher or was that little pullback all you're going to get again you can do what you want to do but Holding on to a short trade would have worked fine after a little while longer, but we're sticking to the rules here, so bailing out at your break-even point up here when they got back up was par for the course again. So once again, no trade. So officially, no points or dollars earned if you were strictly playing by the rules. What I hope you guys did, though, is use the understanding of this axis level at 579.90. That's what it should have been. And use that information to just get on the long side and squeeze a few points out as price went higher for the day. That's what I did after making a mistake that I alluded to earlier by reversing too early before that signal appeared, which I'll look at in a minute here. So this, it's 9.41. I'm going to go ahead and start this recording. And you'll see me go short at 5.79.90. I may have adjusted. I can't remember at this point. I'll speed up right there. So I'm short two contracts. And as you already know, they did not give me the base hit immediately. And if I were playing by the rules and just waiting for that signal, I would have held out and waited this one out. But I jumped out too early when I was short about 900 and something dollars, almost 10 points, and reversed it. And now I'm long to. And this is where they decide to fall. And I just, I missed that 38.2% retracement, a couple of things. That was really the only thing, honestly, at that level. But but really, strictly playing by the rules, I violated my own rule by not giving enough time. And sure enough, by the time they fell, they were in the safest zone, and I was already on the long side. So I just waited it out, even added to the position. So my two contracts turned into four. This is that recycle area I told about. I felt like this was kind of the fake out. Once they would get above and establish you know, dominance above this level, the bulls, then price would go higher. So you see me long four at this point, and I decided to take three off. Figured if they can get above this point, I'd take three off. I can trail the remaining contract for more points. But it was getting close to lunch, and it's something I don't normally do. But I pushed this thing up higher and decided to take all four contracts off up there. Right before, or you know, a healthy 
space before this bottom part of this zone and just let it go. I kept an eye on it because I'm kind of in a safe zone. I have this fumble threshold here on the E-mini chart that if they were to get it below and do certain things below, I would reconsider, possibly take another loss. I'd already lost you know, $950, $975 or so at this point. But I let this thing go, and they gave me the 26 25 up there, like 13 points or so. So I netted a positive $1,600, some change, just by being patient. There we go. There was that trade. Satisfied right there. I let this thing go a little farther. Um, ultimately, I'll just back up so you can see what I did here. See the, see the time here. It's one twelve. I'm seeing what they're doing. Things are slowing down. I made the decision at this point. I'm not going to trade anything else. I made all these levels dotted just as my indication that nothing's going to happen. So when they actually did hit 581.90, regardless of that whole consolidation we talked about earlier, I wasn't planning on taking the trade anyway. And I did not take the trade at 582.70 when they got up there. Just so you can see, I recorded it. And that was it. So I watched them do this. I got this recording just as proof but I did not take the trade. I was happy to pocket what I had in the morning, but to be impatient. Anything new on the daily chart? Not really. Just a retracement of what they did yesterday. We saw where they kind of stalled out at the 38.2%. In fact, I'll show that to you right now. From the high of yesterday to the low of yesterday. So kind of difficult to see here. But the 38.2% was 58098 I had that exact level on the one-minute chart earlier. You can see where they stalled out right there. That was the big pullback. But now that we can see, let's kind of get in a little closer here. That didn't help. Of where they're at, pretty healthy close. They went all the way up to the 61.8. Pretty decent retracement. Currently, they're at 582.30. So they're kind of really in the same area from where they closed. I'm just looking up to the, the post-market. Over on the hourly chart, they did get above the 20-period moving average. I think yesterday we talked about the two-hour chart where they bounced off the 120. Yep, and they continued higher. So everything is still bullish. I keep saying that. Not really seeing anything in particular. Nothing really is standing out as any indication of a signal of a trend change at this point. Just a pullback, a little bit of retracement, and we could kind of start defining a zone. A lot of things can happen. Two more days in the week, so we'll, we'll see what the weekly close looks like on Friday. But right now on the daily chart and everything underneath that, just normal market behavior so far. One other thing I want to point out over here on the IWM, the Russell 2000, here's that signal that we had a while back that the price could come down for a while, and they did. It's been several days. Well, let's just look exactly. It was September 18 through the 10th of October, a big pullback, or not a big pullback, but they, they came back a little bit. But they've, got a, they've been rallying the last several days, and look what they did today. They closed above this area. So this is now off the table. Where is the IWM going? Are they leading the SPY? That is something we want to consider. They're definitely in a different position altogether. The SPY is in and still kind of thinking that bigger moves could happen sooner than later. But we're going to find out. Tomorrow morning, I'll have more refined levels, of course, and we'll cross that road when we get there. Here are the logs. The first one, they play in by the rules log. You can read the notes all three levels hit, but for various reasons, they were not profitable. Either they were in the trade, jumped out of the wash, or not triggered because of consolidation, also in this trade. So theoretically, no points, possibly a little bit, or maybe a little bit in the negative. Depends on how you would have traded them. The best thing to do was just be on the long side like I did. And here are my trades spelled out here. So I had a two-contract trade where I gave 9.5 points back on that fumble when I reversed. But later, I gained a net. I ended up adding, so I had four contracts and got it. It was, you saw the $2,500 and so, so it was $1,675 is what I ended up netting before commissions. And once again, I did not even touch the upper two levels. So really everything I had was based on that little axis level from the morning. Got above it and I went long and it worked out. So that's a wrap for today. I appreciate you hanging in there and following along. Hope you found some value. Thanks for the occasional comment or question that you drop into these videos. I appreciate the feedback. Be back tomorrow morning with new levels. Talk to you then. Have a great rest of your day.